Hi everyone, so first of all I took this um, skull that I had and painted it black. Then um, I started to sculpt on top of it with some oven baked clay. Now obviously I can't bake the skull in the oven obviously. Um, so what I did was I just used my heat gun to heat up the clay and that made the clay set. Because um, the heat gun does get quite hot um, and I just focused the heat on the clay. <clears throat> so I was able to dry the pieces without and get the pieces to set without affecting the plastic of the uh, skull. The skull is from an old thing that my daughter collected years ago um, called Funny Bones magazine. And it had like a skeleton you could collect each week to build. And I quite like the skull on it, so I've kept the skull. Um, there was a lot of damage to it. It was quite old, so I've took the rest of it. But uh, yeah, kept this bit. So what I'm doing now is I've added a bit of clay to the bridge of the nose. I wanted to make that more pointy. Um, and I'm adding some extra clay around the eye socket at the top just to make it stick out a little bit more. I just wanted to change the shape, the shape slightly. Um, the idea being that this is like a human demon hybrid skull. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using the baby wipe just to smooth everything down because it was quite warm in my room that day. And every time I smoothed the clay, it was like sort of crumbling a little bit. So. Um, I wanted to use some, uh, not quite put water on because I didn't want to lift up the paint that I'd put as the base layer. But I wanted to get a nice smooth finish. Now, obviously with this, if any pieces pop off after you've set them, um, it's just a case of just gluing them back on. But I found they stick quite well. It was just the teeth and the little, um, the little horns on the cheekbones I had to stick back on. Um, everything else seemed to stay in place once the clay had set, so that was pretty good. So once I heated everything up with the heat gun um, and it was set, it was time to add a few more details here and there. So I rolled some little spiky bits to add to the cheekbones. Now these, once they dried, um, like once they set, they did pop off, but I just glued them back on. Um, it was easy enough to do. Um, and then what I did was I used my glue gun to draw some extra details onto the skull, like my little sigil that I have as my signature for my artwork down the forehead, some dots and lines here and there. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like once I got to that stage. Okay, so once everything had been uh, dried, and once the glue had set, it looked like this. And it was a case of painting the whole thing black, first of all, um, just to get the a nice, a nice uniform base layer. Um, plus, I wanted the skull to be mostly black anyway, to fit in with the decor. And once the uh, paint had dried, again, you can speed up the process with a hairdryer. Then I used some gilding wax and I used the gold colour to show up and highlight any areas that I wanted to stand out, like the foam sigil, the um, little details I'd added, like the little spots and lines and things, and the pentagram on the top of the head, um, and also some other little areas like the teeth and things. Um, then once I had highlighted the pieces that I wanted in the gold, because I wanted this to be mostly black, I did use a um, little touch of grey, greyish white um, to dry brush over the texture of the horns and in places over the skull just to make some of the textures and details stand out a bit more because it is quite a detailed skull for a plastic kids think um, so I wanted to get those details to show up and here you can see I'm adding the gold to my slightly wonky uh, pentagram at the top but I don't mind it doesn't matter I was drawing it in hot glue for, to be fair so um, if you get any gold anywhere where you don't want it just touch up the paint with black again and it'll paint over really easy because the uh, gilding wax stuff is water based anyway I use the metallic luster wax and it is water based. So here I'm just making some other little bits stand out.
like so. It really makes those details that I've put on top pop out. Unfortunately, my seal is slightly wonky, um, but eh, I could always pop that off and redo it. Um, I just couldn't be bothered. Um, I, I don't know, I kind of like the sort of rustic, slightly wonky look anyway. Then I took some white and applied it to my brush and then wiped most of it off and then just used that to dry brush over the horns and as you can see it makes those details pop. The details on the clay, like the texture on the clay, I just used my um, hot glue gun and moved it backwards and forwards quickly as I went round the horns to add that texture detail. Um, it just It's a nice quick way of adding detail because um, I wanted these to look like they're quite strong um, but quite sort of textured horns and I use that on the uh, horns first of all and then you'll see me do that around the skull to make some of the details especially on the face show up a bit more um, it was just to add a bit of variation because I didn't want it to just be solid black and then the horns uh, dry brushed um, so it made the eye socket textures show up really well and I'm just very lightly going over these areas um, you don't want to apply the paint quite wet either you want to have it so there's hardly any paint on your brush and it'll just it'll just catch the very tops of the highest points on the uh, sculpture to make it make the details stand out and once it's finished it looked like this Hope you enjoyed this little video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.